We're going to talk about continuity and one-sided lip. Our objectives are to determine the continuity and continuity on an open interval of a function. And then secondly, so first, let's talk about continuity of a graph. In math, the term continuous has much the same meaning informally to say that a function f is continuous at x equals c means that there's no interruption in the graph of f at c. You could draw the graph without lifting up your pencil. In other words, the graph is unbroken at c. There are no holes, no jumps, or vertical asymptotes. Let's think about how this is related to limits, if at all. Does the limit exist at a hole? Yes, it does, because the both the, x and the right and the left side of the y values approach that hole. So the limit exists, but it's not, the graph is not continuous there. At a jump, no, the limit does not exist because the left and the right side approach two different values. And the graph is also not continuous there, or we say discontinuous. Vertical asymptotes, the limit does not exist because the graph is unbounded at that point, and the function is not continuous. So there's a little bit of overlap with limits and continuity, but not exactly. In this graph, we've got three graphs. There are three values of x at which the graph of f is not continuous. So at this hole here, f of c is not defined. There's no value for the y value there at that hole. The graph is not continuous at that point. At c, the graph is not continuous. If you drew it, you'd have to pick up your pencil, draw a circle, and then draw the rest of the graph. Here, the limits not exist at all, and the graph is discontinuous here. Here, the limit exists, it's this y value at the hole, but the limit does not equal the actual y value. The actual y value is down here. So this is discontinuous. This graph is discontinuous at c. This graph is discontinuous at c. And this graph is discontinuous at c. Definition of continuity. A function is continuous at c if three things are met. If there is a y value at c, if the limit of the y value at c exists, so that means the left and the right side approach the same y value, and if that y value of the graph is the same thing as the limit. So the value that the left and the right side have to approach has to be the same as that actual y value. If that's true everywhere on the graph, the function, function is continuous on the open interval, whatever interval we're looking at. If it's continuous everywhere in the whole graph, it's negative infinity to infinity. That's where it's continuous. We call it an open interval because the parentheses here mean we don't have to include the endpoints, just the stuff in between. So let's call whatever interval that is, we'll call it i, that contains a real number c. If a function is defined on i, except possibly at that point, and f is not continuous at c, then f is said to have a discontinuity at c. So discontinuities are jumps, holes, okay? So if a graph has a jump or a hole or an asymptote, a vertical asymptote in an interval, then the graph has a discontinuity at C. There are two types of discontinuities, removable and non-removable. A non-removable discontinuity can be removed if you redefine the function. So if you rewrite the function like factor it and cancel something out and rewrite it so it's a function that looks exactly like the original except at one point it's different so it's a function that agrees at all but one point if you can cancel out that problem that hole then that's a removable discontinuity so let's talk about non-removable discontinuities first of all this one is removable it's got a hole this one's non-removable it's a jump and this one's removable, it has a hole. A couple more examples. This discontinuity at zero here is non-removable. It's a vertical asymptote. You can't remove that. Here, we can't remove that. Not removable. So the only, fun only kind of discontinuity that is removable is a hole. So let's talk about each of these functions, one at a time. So first, let's analyze the function f of x equals 1 over x. Let's look at that graph. 
the domain of it is negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. Something's going on at zero. This function cannot equal zero. It's got a vertical asymptote there. That's non-removable. This function, x squared minus one over x minus one, is removable, has a removable discontinuity because we can factor and cancel out the value. I gotta get a pen here. All right, so we can factor the x squared minus one to x plus one times x minus one over x minus one. Cancel that out, and this new function, x plus one, agrees with this function, function at all but one point. Our new function doesn't have a hole here. So we found a new function that doesn't have a discontinuity. So that's a removable discontinuity. We removed it, okay? Even though it's a, it's a discontinuity, it's called a removable discontinuity. Here's a graph with x plus one for the first piece, it's a piecewise function, and x squared plus one for the second piece. The graph is continuous between negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. The limit from the left and the right value, so the y value from the left and the y value from the right go to the same value. So even though there's a sharp turn in the graph, it's called a cusp, the graph is still continuous. So the function, put, the two pieces put together are continuous on the entire real line. So you wouldn't want to write that. You want to write negative infinity to infinity as the domain because it's also continuous at zero. All right, so even at a sharp turn, as long as you didn't have to pick up your pencil and move it, then it's continuous. The function is continuous. And of course, something like the graph of sine x where you can just draw, keep drawing forever, it's continuous on the entire domain. You could say all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. In the last example, we've got this piecewise function. It's only continuous from negative infinity to one, including one. It's got that solid filled in circle there for this part, and then one to infinity, so not including one here. So this function has a non-removable discontinuity. There we go. Non-removable, there's no way to rewrite this function so that these two pieces match up. So it's non-removable. Okay, let's talk about these. Find the values, if any, at which f is not continuous. Which of the discontinuities are removable? So this is an absolute value function, so it's gonna make a v, but we're dividing it by this. So we're probably gonna have an issue at three, right? That's what makes the denominator equal zero. Let's remember what our definition of absolute value is. It's positive x minus three, for x is greater than or equal to three, and negative x minus three for x is less than three. So if we divide top by x minus three, oh, this shouldn't say f of x here, that's just the definition of absolute value, x minus three, sorry. So, let me fix that. This is just the absolute value of x minus three here. So if we divide each of these by x minus three, we'll have x minus three over x minus three, which is one, and we'll have negative x minus three over x minus three, which is negative one. So this graph is a piecewise function with a horizontal line at one and another horizontal line at negative one. The top one's gonna have the closed circle, the bottom one's gonna have the open circle because it's less than three. So removable or non-removable, and where's the discontinuity? It's discontinuous at x equals three, and it's non-removable. There's no way for us to make that graph match up. All right, how about x squared? x is greater than one and negative two x plus three for x is less than or equal to one. At one, what's the y value here? Even though x can't equal one, let's see where the hole is. So one, one squared is one. If you plug one into this part, negative two plus three is one. So the solid fit in circle for this part is gonna match up with the hole for this part. So it's actually gonna have no 
gap at all because the two pieces match up. Here's the graph of tangent. Notice tangent has vertical asymptotes. So it's going to be non-removable discontinuities. So tangent has non-removable discontinuities where negative pi over 2, pi over 2, etc. And x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1, that we can factor so that the discontinuity, the x minus 1, can be canceled out. Once you cancel out that discontinuity, it's removed, so it's a removable discontinuity at x equals 1. So that would be a hole in the graph. So this has a jump, non-removable. This one, the two pieces match up. It's just a cusp. So it's continuous everywhere. There's no discontinuity. This one has non-removable discontinuities, a lot of them. And this one has one removable discontinuity at 1. I'll stop this now and the next video we'll start with one-sided limits and continuity and continuity on a closed interval.